Zardy's Maze, how we made one of the hardest horror games. Hey everyone, the official Zardy plushie just dropped. It's absolutely adorable and evil, but I'm super happy with how it turned out. If you'd like to support my Zardy projects and get yourself this adorable little fella, click the link in the description below before time runs out. Zardy's Maze, a brutal horror game where you're shuffling around in a maze in the dark, hoping to avoid the deadly entities that lurk there. From Zardy to Pumpkin Jack to Cable Crow and many others. There's a lot to watch out for. But how was this game actually made? Let's talk about that. And of course, if you haven't played the game, just know you can get it for free on Steam or itch.io. Send it to your favorite YouTuber if you'd like to see him tackle it. Maybe it's this. Oh, joy, joy! So the response to the Zardy Friday Night Funkin' mod has been absolutely mind-blowing. People have been sending me all sorts of artwork featuring the spooky scarecrow Zardy and all his dastardly friends. And it has been truly awesome watching some of my favorite content creators taking up the challenge. So if you're a Friday Night Funkin' fan, you've probably figured out that Zardy isn't an original character crafted from that universe. If you watched my previous video talking about how the Friday Night Funkin' mod was made, you probably realized this. Lots of people who watched that video appreciated the breakdown I did talking about how we went from concept to full-blown execution in terms of making the mod. And it's kind of cool to know that showing that process inspired a lot of other people to start working on cool mods too. Now, creating a mod for an existing game is a lot easier than making a full-blown game from scratch. But for those of you interested in the game design process, I'm going to do my best to explain the process behind making my horror game Zardy's Maze. From concept to development to animation, sound design, and everything in between. And if you stick around to the end, I might have an interesting surprise for all you Friday Night Funkin' fans. But for you ambitious game developers out there, this is how Zardy's Maze was created. July 22nd, 2017. It's like 4 a.m. and I wake up covered in sweat. I had this horrific experience of wandering around a corn maze in the dead of night, thinking that something was pursuing me. I always loved corn mazes, so I understand why I was dreaming of one. I just knew I needed to make it to the center for some reason. But it was this moment that originally birthed the idea of Zardy's Maze. Because my mental state went from fear to thinking about the concept of a terrifying corn maze. And then I started writing down a bunch of stuff in my phone before ultimately falling back asleep. But the seed had been planted, no pun intended. Within the next few days, I had the full concept developed in my mind. A game that preyed on three core fears, getting lost, the darkness of night, and being hunted down. At the time though, this game concept did not feature all the strange monsters that you'd encounter if you played it today. It wasn't until a little bit later, while drafting out concepts and thinking about the antagonists, did a little light go off in my head. You see, as a child, I used to doodle all the time. I'd always use the leftover portions of my school notebooks to draw all sorts of wacky characters. I was always making stories in my head. Stories at one point that I hoped to bring to life. Some of these became comics, others became RPG Maker games. Enter the lead spooky Scarecrow and his slew of strange foes. I loved Scarecrows as a kid. It's kind of funny because in theme with Friday Night Funkin' and Newgrounds, these characters are not only derived from my childhood that was decades ago, but they also became some of the first Flash animations I had ever made when I was younger. I wanted to try Flash out because I used to watch lots of Newgrounds myself, and that's why these characters were a perfect fit for the game I wanted to make. So childhood characters thrown to the mix for a spooky horror experience, and you have yourself a loose concept for a game. I mean, corn mazes at night terrified me, and there was nothing worse than walking by dummies and scarecrows on Halloween and not knowing if they'd jump out at you. Anyways, alongside these characters, there's definitely lore within all this too, but that's something I won't be addressing in this video. When making a game of any sort, you want the world to feel believable. But for Zardy's Maze, I also wanted to make it feel mysterious and almost confusing. This frustrates some players, but others take up the challenge to figure things out without being told what to do. It's actually probably not a good game design practice, but sometimes you offer things that are unconventional. My mind immediately goes to Five Nights at Freddy's and how convoluted everything was within those games. But I digress. Zardy's Maze was made over the span of two to three years from concept to release, but it certainly was not a solo endeavor. The team members that made this happen were developer Zach Fierce, 3D modeler and animator The Regressor, and sound assistance by Orchestral Design. I knew Zach because I played this game Bombfest at PAX East and other conventions, which is a really incredible game by the way. I knew The Regressor from an Undertale collaboration we did back in 2016, and I met Orchestral Design at VidCon in the Creators Lounge. And that was our team. From there, we selected an engine, which in our case was Unity, and our adventure began. So the first thing we did was come up with a design document. This document basically lists out everything specific to the game, from a summary of the gameplay experience, to the player's abilities slash actions, to the enemies, environment, and everything in between. It's funny because going back and looking at this document now, we deviated from a lot of really fun ideas. At one point, we thought about giving the player the option of grabbing a torch instead of the crank flashlight in the game, so they'd have an option. 
the torch concept would have burned the corn around you while also lighting you on fire. So we ultimately scrapped it because of how ridiculous it was. We outlined all the enemies, the maze structures, and a lot of other things. Originally, there was a day slash night cycle with the game too, but it was scrapped because it was essentially pointless and just prolonged the game experience. The original itch.io page played off the day theme too before challenge mode came out, as a way to mislead players into thinking Zardy's Maze was a jolly game. Even the first trailer was super happy and chipper. The contrast of people booting up the game for the first time, and then realizing it was night was a cruel idea of mine, and it was a way to throw back to that original concept. With the design document in place and the game mechanics outlined, it was now time to start the alpha. Zack was up the bat for coming up with the base code, and what we started out with was a daytime field full of developer art, basically placeholder assets that could be used to make the game mechanics. The maze itself was procedurally generated around several key points, these points being the open rooms for the maze where the vines would spawn, and the exits to the maze. The idea for Zardy's Maze was that we wanted to give players tons of freedom when it came to movement. Oftentimes in maze games, the walls basically hold you in place. But what if we took the maze concept and flipped it? Give people the ability to leave the maze path to avoid enemies, but at the risk of their life. Wandering through the corn is an absolutely necessary strategy, but if you stay in the corn too long, you die. I immediately think of Treasure Trove Cove in Banjo-Kazooie, where if you stay in the water too long, a shark gets you. But this time, the shark is a deadly scarecrow. There's risk, and there's reward. But at this time, the enemies were just pill-shaped capsules. Zardy was just a big purple pill. Cable Crow was a yellow pill. Pumpkin Crawlers were orange circles, etc. The Rattler existed way back in this early alpha too, but we ended up removing all references to him until the challenge mode came out. It's kind of funny though, because the early dev art for the corn, something that was created on a whim as a placeholder, ended up being the one graphic that is still in the game today. Once the base mechanics were implemented, it was now time to turn off the lights. And from that point forward, Zardy's Maze was in the dark. The first design for the flashlight was also developer art. But even seeing a purple pill sneak around a corner was kind of scary. Without a skybox, this felt super dark. And this was something that eventually inspired challenge number six in the game. So next up, we added a skybox that would eventually be downscaled and altered into the final skybox. And the game started to come a bit more alive. For those unaware, the skybox is this big container that holds the sky you see in the world. It's typically a sphere or even a square in older games. You'll notice that the screen used to get obscured by corn stalks when you went into the corn too. Something we eventually scrapped. Next up, we added an axe and the player had to collect the flashlight and axe before entering the maze. The power meter for the flashlight was originally on the bottom of the screen, and it was eventually moved up to clean up the screen. At this point, the game's mechanics were starting to fit together, and it was now time to start bringing the characters to life. So pretty much every character in this game was derived from my childhood drawing notebooks and my super early flash animations I did what seems like an entire lifetime ago. Right before we initially drafted up a design document, I realized it made way more sense to utilize my childhood characters since all of them were eerie. Zardy, which is a pet name for Zarada, was the leader of the bunch and I uh, knew him well. Zardy was basically the head honcho, and Pumpkin Jack, the Brute, and Cable Crow were his lackeys. The Rattler, another character, was from the same universe, so to speak, but wasn't typically with this group. So each character needed to be rendered in 3D and rigged properly so that they could be brought to life in the game. To start off this process, I decided to create design documents for each character, and front-facing slash side-facing still images that could be intersected in 3D space so that when building a 3D model, you'd have a reference regardless of where you're at in 3D. Zardy was up first, and you can see how he looked a bit different in his beta version. We eventually gave him a less awkward face that was more bright and sinister. But he was modeled in Maya and eventually animated there. Same went with Pumpkin Jack, The Brute, Cable Crow, and Rattler. Every character in the game had a design sheet and illustrations that go along with it, so the regressor could utilize these to fully understand these odd, stiff characters. Each character needed to have several animations to go with them too. I acted most of these out for reference. I looked silly, but it worked. Idle poses, moving animations. Some characters had running and jumping animations like Pumpkin Jack. The Cable Crow had a lot of weird animations since his movement was much different than every other character too. He'd swing around the wooden post, aim with his arm, shoot at the other post, pull himself over, and then start all over again. And on top of all of this, each character had to have a jump scare animation too. Some were simpler than others, but all these things need to be animated, placed in engine, and made sure that there weren't any hiccups when it came to making all these animations play seamlessly. We actually messed up on Pumpkin Jack's walking animation, which caused him a stutter in his step, but we ended up leaving it in the game as a happy mistake, because it made his walk animation super stiff and kind of disturbing. Sometimes mistakes become features in game dev. As the characters were being developed, we of course need to work on the environmental assets too. 
So size charts were made that reference other 3D models that need to be created. Developmental fences and other artwork need to be swapped out. And this is also when I designed the new flashlight. The world of Zardy's Maze was of course based on the Nintendo 64 era of gaming, in terms of its look and feel. So with each new asset being added to the game, this feeling became more and more cohesive in this low poly nightmare. All these things took a great deal of time mind you. We met up twice a week to talk game dev over Discord, and in between meetings we would work on individual things. During this time I was working with Orchestral Design to get sound effects made. Half of the sounds of the game were made by me, and the other half were made by him. For a lot of the sounds we actually got tools and made them ourselves. Zardy's garden hoe dragging noise was actually recorded by us. Same goes for every sound involving the corn. I went out and bought corn stalks, isolated them in a room, and shook them around and hit them with objects, etc. I recorded all of this on my microphone. Rattler's shake noise is actually a bead rolling around in a container. The grass noises were me stomping on piles of grass. Certain sounds that couldn't be recorded were produced by layering other sound effects. For example, I made the jump scare sound in the game by using a bare roar, a metal scraping sound, and some squeaky toy sounds. Throw all of these into a pot and you have a recipe for a startling noise that catches players off guard. Audio brings your world to life by making it feel more lifelike. And audio is also a great tool for letting people know something is happening. Like for example, when you're chopping off a pumpkin crawler, there's a terrifying shriek that is heard upon defeat. And immediately, you start to hear some laughter that gets closer and closer. At first, this confuses the player. But because of how these sounds are used, it relays a cause and effect that teaches the player a game mechanic, if they pay attention. Zardu's Maze lacks music because sound is super important for surviving. It allows you to see things you're not even looking at, but because of the sound, you know it is there. Zardi's hoe dragging sound is one of those dreadful noises that alerts a player that they are in danger, but they can also use it to gauge Zardi's distance. It's little things like this that really help the player understand and conform to their surroundings. All of these things took a very long time to get right and test out. Player feedback was super important for squashing bugs too. Because in game design, there are always things you can't predict. Like for example, despite testing the game over and over on both Mac and PC, a small fraction of players encountered a bug that made them fall through the floor upon spawn. This would only happen once in a blue moon, and they would typically spawn without issues, but we couldn't recreate the issue at all. So we implemented a failsafe in case it happened to players. Was it a operating system issue? Was it a build version issue? Without being there, it's hard to tell. But testing the game takes just as long as making a game. If not longer if your game is long. Even coming out with a Mac build is a lot of work. Not because it's hard to generate a Mac version, but because you don't know if Mac bugs will occur. I know some people have also asked for mobile versions, but that's also one of the drawbacks that makes it difficult. Challenge mode was implemented in the game to offer a bigger variety of gameplay and something for the player to work towards. Every set challenge had a different quirk that made it different than the last. Alongside this, we released a full custom challenge. I always loved the idea of people setting up their own challenges, and I remember how much I enjoyed watching my favorite YouTubers play the first Five Nights at Freddy's games with all the difficulties turned up. Players can choose their maze size, enemy count, enemy difficulty, and even set a custom seed that will make it so the maze is the same every time. We put out challenge mode a few months after the first release of Zard maze. And during that time, we refined a lot of mechanics that people had issues with. Fixing hitboxes, stun bugs, and a few other things. And the rest, well, that's history. One main story mode with lots to explore, and seven devious challenges designed to test the most experienced of players. And then there's the secrets and lore. I mean, are there even secrets? Who would do such a thing? I do have one final thing to show you all, but first I want to say that the response to Zardy's Maze has been incredibly rewarding for me. If you haven't tried the game yet, give it a whirl. We made it free so anyone could try it. If you're scared of games like this, ask your favorite content creator to try it instead. You'd be helping me out a ton. Truth be told, I pretty much watched all the first Five Nights at Freddy's because I wasn't good at them, but I love them because I could watch them on YouTube and watch Markiplier and other creators react. That was kind of my dream for Zardy's Maze, and it's been a lot of fun so far. But now, I have a special announcement. So the Zardy mod for Friday Night Funkin' that came out wasn't the end-all be-all. In fact, it's kind of funny because we scrapped some mechanics in the mod that later on people showed interest in. Ironically, it was supposed to have boss mechanics, but it was ultimately decided against during development. Now, while I can't promise that all the ideas will be returning, I am happy to announce that Week 2 is real. And it's got some good twists that are sure to keep you on your toes. Zardy's come for revenge, but he may not be the only thing you need to worry about. And the best part? The second phase of Zardy releases on August 29th, 2021. I hope your fingers are ready. And don't forget to grab yourself a Zardy plushie. They are so cool and so well made. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Zardy's maze. Everyone involved has been incredibly helpful. And if you're interested in learning more about game design, I highly recommend checking out the main programmer, Zach. 
He runs a super helpful Discord for game developers, so if you have an interest in pursuing game design yourself, pop in and ask him a question. You can find the Discord link in the description below. Cheers for now.